coming up ahead of you, so enjoy it. Enjoy this moment, and let's get it over to Woj, who has an update for us. Maria, the, the Atlanta Hawks and Dallas Mavericks have agreed in principle to a deal that would send the third pick in the draft from Atlanta to Dallas for the fifth pick and a future first-round pick from Dallas to Atlanta. It's contingent on this, that the, the, uh, the Hawks will select Luka Doncic with a third pick. They will send him to Dallas. And if Trey Young is still there at number five, and he's expected to be, Memphis is focused on Jaron Jackson at four. Trey Young will go from the Dallas Mavericks at five to the Atlanta Hawks at three. All right, Woj told us as we started our draft coverage to watch for this. Apparently, the Hawks and the Mavericks have an agreement, but it's the Hawks who will be making the selection here. With the third pick in the 2018 NBA Draft, the Atlanta Hawks select Luka Doncic from Ljubljana, Slovenia and Real Madrid. Man, it has been quite a couple of days for Luka Doncic. We saw him hugging his mother there. As Trey Young now sits and waits. We expect from what Woj just told us that Luka will be on his way to Dallas in the air apparent as the franchise cornerstone after Dirk Nowitzki. As Woj pointed out, his contingent on Trey Young still being there and ultimately winding up with the Hawks. But this player is a guy internationally who is as proven and as scouted as any international player we've had. Maria, Jaron, and the Jackson family, thank you very much. Mavericks on the clock. We've heard that they likely have a deal with Atlanta. We expect Trey Young here. With the fifth pick in the 2018 NBA Draft, the Dallas Mavericks select Trey Young from the University of Oklahoma. In the days leading up to the draft, the guy was a sensation in college basketball last year. Some Damn. said would be slipping. Concerns about his size, concerns about his defense. He said it was up to him to change that narrative about whether he defended anyone. Let me tell you, this dude put up offense on everybody with 27 points and nearly nine assists to lead the nation in both categories. Woj, you got some more details on this proposed deal with the Mavericks and the Hawks? Yeah, Reese, the Hawks general manager, Travis Schlenk, has coveted Trey Young throughout the entire season. Schlenk came from the Golden State Warriors, worked in their front office. He was there when they drafted Steph Curry, and Curry became a two-time MVP. Now, he, he's not sure that he's got Steph Curry here, but he absolutely got a player he believes will be a star for the Hawks. And uh, I think right now for, for them, this was the best case scenario in the draft because not only do, does he get a player he wanted greatly in Young, he gets a first round pick from Dallas next year. And this is a draft where Atlanta's got three first round picks. Obviously a big night for the Hawks. 2018 NBA draft, they started off trading their third pick for the fifth. They picked up Trey Young, then they picked up Kevin Herter from Maryland, and finally from the national championship team, Amari Spellman. The Hawks went offensive upside, offense first with this draft. Even with Herter and Spellman on the wings, they provide shooting out there, but this all comes down to Trey Young, getting one of the most electric players we have seen in college basketball in quite some time. But moving down in the draft, away from Luka Doncic, trading with the Dallas Mavericks, along with a future first round pick, that is where this draft class is eventually going to hinge. What did they get out of Trey Young after moving away from Dodge? The real narrative for this draft is did the Hawks make the right play? Is Trey Young going to become a better star, a bigger star, than Luka Doncic? That's what this all hinges on. Did they make the right decision there and moving down to get a guy that they believed in? I hate when teams are stupid. Atlanta could just take Doncic at three. Instead, they trade Doncic for Trey Young, who really has major bust potential, like really could be out of the league in six years. I hate what Atlanta did. I hate it more passionately than anything I've hated any NBA team has done in the last two years. I think that trade is gonna be historic Bad. You will never get fired for taking Luka Doncic number three, ever. You will get fired for trading down to five and taking Trey Young if Trey Young isn't good and Doncic is awesome. You will get fired. It's just a matter of when. If it, it, it may not even matter if you nail some other stuff. 
that will get you fired and it will mar the rest of your career. The kid is really, really talented, but I would have taken Colin Sexton before I would have taken Trey Young. Let me tell you why. That was the Trey, question. Trey Young was, is six one and a half. He is 185 pounds soaking wet. I don't know if I see him being that superstar level guard at that level because you can push him around. I don't know if I see him being the level of caliber of player that I see Colin Sexton or Shea Gilgis Alexander being in the future. Just look, he got worn down in a 32 game schedule. In the Big 12, they lost nine of their last 11 games, including the, the first round game to Rhode Island in the tournament because he got worn down and wore out. I think Dante oh, DiVincenzo has a higher NBA ceiling than Trey Young does. Obviously, I hear everything that goes on. For me, all I do is try to focus on myself and my team. Trey with seven, six. Trey's gonna launch from deep, it looks like. Yep, there it comes. Outstanding. Trey spins it in and a foul on LeBron James. Two seconds one. Trey Slaughter. Good! With point one. And the Hawks are going to win this game. Spins it in. Kevin looking. Lob to the basket. Poked away. Trey. Talk about doubters. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I feel like you naturally just brought it up into the conversation. Mm -hmm. People doubted you coming into the league. Yeah. Will his game translate? Is he big enough to play in this league? How did that affect you? Like, what do you remember people saying about you coming out of the draft? Uh, I, I remember. I remember a lot of things. Uh, I mean, just everything that I mean, people said about me coming to the draft, or as soon as I announced that I was coming. Just me thinking about everybody who's doubting me, uh, people who don't believe in me. Um, I just, it just fueled me to get better. And, uh, I've always had that type of chip on my shoulder. Is it true that you screenshot it sometimes? Tweets from people? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I definitely like if there's things that I, I would see or something that would just really bug me. I would, I mean, I would, I would just screenshot it. And I would just, um, whether it's on my phone literally or or a mental screenshot, I would. I would always have that in my mind, um, just because I knew that would be a little bit extra motivation to, to get me where I want to be. Give me some mental screenshot tweets or messages that you remember. Uh, I don't, I don't want to <laughs> want to say no names or anything like that, but it's definitely some, some things I saw on TV mm -hmm. or tweets and like that. I don't, I don't want to say any names. But you don't have to say names. What they say? Oh, I mean, he's too small. His major bust potential. Um, little things like. I mean, he's not going to be able to play all 82 games. Um, just, just how I'll be out to leave um, really quick. Just little things like that. It's just, just little things. They all add up. Um, they may be little, but um, it means something to me. The fact that I even have to ask you about Luka Doncic. And yeah. Everybody's fixated on that. It honestly kind of bothers me that I have to. But that's so much a conversation of your early career. Yeah. And does it bother you that? people can't seem to separate you two guys? I mean, it bothers me because I, I mean, it's, it's annoying just getting asked about mm -hmm. it all the time. Yeah, but, yeah uh, I'm asking you about it. Yeah, yeah, but it, I mean, I know it comes with it. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't, I didn't ask for it to happen, but it, it happened. So it, I think that's just what comes with it. What do you think that it'll, it'll take for people to quit asking about it? Retirement. <laughs> <laughs> Retirement. I think that's what's gonna gonna take. I, it's gonna it's gonna happen throughout our whole careers. It's, we're gonna be compared throughout our whole careers, and I mean that's fine. Um, and that's that's just what's gonna have to be. It happened on draft night, and I don't think it'll stop till we're both retired. Atlanta allowed Dallas to trade up. Trey Young can ball. Trey Young is arguably the second coming of Steph Curry. The way he can handle and shoot, no doubt. But I think it's safe to say at this juncture, he's no Luka Doncic. Captures the dribble. Three to shoot. Banks it in! A three-pointer for Trey Young! You are a cheat code, young man. Got Aldridge on it. 
side steps it, backs up, goes to back to work, shovels at the membrane! Uh, defensively, Morris now. Oh, a fake him behind the back, and Trey lays it in! Trey waits for the screen, gets the contact, and hits it! Trey. Oh, my goodness! Trey Young with 50 points. A new career high for Trey Young. I don't see it. I don't think Trey Young's fun to play with. I know he puts up stats, but I still don't think he has figured out the part of the game that he's got to make everybody else better. He hasn't won anything yet. I still can't imagine Trey Young playing competent NBA defense. And until we see an indication that he is capable of competent NBA defense, he's a gigantic liability. They sucked on offense last year too. So for all the Trey Young love, they were the 26th best offense. Prove us wrong with wins. We just want to see it translate to some wins before we start throwing a party for Trey Young. We've seen a lot of people over the years put up big stats on bad teams. It doesn't impress me, doesn't impress Rosillo, doesn't impress House. That's, that's how you're going to impress the three people on this podcast. Play winning basketball. Let's see it. Trey Young, who made his Major League debut in this building three years ago, now plays his first playoff game inside Madison Square Garden. And the Hawks are looking to carry the momentum of a late season surge to victory tonight. The tour timeout might be two to one. Trey with a floater to open the scoring. And both teams a little bit off. Here comes Young, lobbing inside to Capella. Here's Trey, lobbing Collins with the jam, and here they go again. Here comes Young, all the way to the cup. Trey Young putting him on his back. Trey works off the staggered screen, turns the corner, nobody there, and he lays it in off the glass. Trey driving around Rose again, hits the floater, count the basket, and a foul on New York. Here comes Trey, we're down to six, five. Trey gets some daylight, Trey going up. With point nine, and he's done it again. They cannot stop Trey Young. Unbelievable by Capella. Hawks in transition. Here goes Young. Randall is there. Oh, oh what a oh, finish oh. by Trey Young with a reverse. Here. Oh my, Nick. Trey from distance, and he puts it in, and that silences the crowd. On defense, Young draws the foul. 15 to 12, Trey coming right back at him. Shovels and Capella jams. Trey for three, dialed in. Oh, it got awful cold in here. Had a mismatch here, although Randall, a good defender, they'll switch with him. Young with the drop. Here is a guy who has been underrated his entire career in his mind, right? Because of the size, the chip he has to play with. Feels like he's disrespected. The conversations about the, the pick swap, all of those things. This is a city that can feel and embrace being disrespected. It's an into Collins now, Trey Young. Slams on the brakes. Bullock needs some new brake pads after that. Wow. As Young fires from the way, down the town and takes him out. <laughs> Not appreciated. Switch with Harris, a deep bomb! Oh, from way downtown! The surest ball handler throws it up, and that is the exclamation point! At the back, Collins for three, oh, off the window! Right on the screen, here he goes, and Young scores again! Drives tries to pull it back, getting bumped by Maxi. Young, let's go of it! Oh! about yourself in this season that you're going to carry over in the next year? Just really just proved to myself that I was right all along. Uh, just that we just we needed to get to the, the playoffs to really open some eyes. I mean, all I wanted to prove coming into this season was that I can win. I mean, I, I, mean, I remember at, Sarah asked me that uh, 
before the season started. And I, I mean, I just remember telling her that I didn't care about no individual things, accolades, uh, anything else. I just cared about winning. And uh, I think uh, I ho hopefully people have a different mindset when they look at me uh, in that type of light. It's been said, and I'm not the first person to make this point, but like, no, it, like, Trey Young hasn't been having his ass kissed his whole life about why he's going to be great. It's been the opposite. Why he's not going to get it done, right? Like, why this doesn't make sense that he would excel to this degree. Even when he was killing as a rookie, second-year guy, people were like, oh, man, is this going to work in the playoffs? They're just going to hunt this guy. They're I was one him. of those people. <laughs> I, I, good stats, bad team guy. I was convinced. I was dead wrong. I so own it. I was, he, I was he's wrong. He's a guy who had to actually believe in himself the whole time. It's not like people were kissing his ass and talking about patting him on the head and saying, you're going to be so great, kid. No, it's been the opposite. So the mental toughness is already there. That's what I love about Trey Young. Anyone that's ever even played, I would say this is even true, like in pickup basketball, in any town, city, Rucker Park, anywhere, the little guy has to be so much smarter, so much better, so much more arrogant or he can't succeed, he just really can't. And Trey Young got that from the very, you know, I mean, I did that long story on him a few months ago, and my favorite story from that, that whole thing was, so, you know, a new coach moves to town in Norman, Oklahoma, and they're like, he's like, oh, I wanna run some summer league stuff for the, for the varsity, who should I invite? And they're like, well, you know, here are the returning players, and yeah, there's this eighth grader, he thinks he's hot shit, you know, we're not really sure how good he is, but, you know, you should probably invite him. It'd be entertaining to have him. And so Trey Young's in the eighth grade, okay? He's in the eighth grade. He hasn't even in high school yet. He shows up at this summer workout that he, you know, almost wasn't invited to. And the first thing he does is go to the front of the line. And they're all looking at him like, you know, get, get the hell out of here. And they send him to the back. And everyone kind of has a good laugh. And then the next day, he shows up and he does it again. Because, see, the thing about Trey Young is it's not an act. He really believes and has believed his entire life that he's the best player. Mm. Even, even when he was playing against Kevin Durant, his idol, his childhood idol, you know, Westbrook, those guys, you know, was he in a little awe of them? Sure, he was. But the, but the fact remains, he truly believes he can beat anybody. He mm. truly believes he's the best.